What kind of flesh knife is that? Necker knife. Necker knife. Yeah. A red fo oh, I mean, a coyote, you don't really have to get a lot of the fat off. Now I flush all the meat in. Uh, if there's a heavy fat under here, and I flush it off. If there's just a little bit of membrane here, I usually leave it on. But, because if you don't, they get stiff and boardy. And I like to have a nice, soft coyote once they're cut up. This one's getting tan for somebody, but. Yeah, it's taking it off good. What's the hardest animal to flesh that you do? Coyote. Uh, the coyotes aren't really bad. Um, it's just they seem to stop when you get about right here. But, uh, I mean, I like fleshing coon and beaver, but most people say those are the two harder animals to do. Now, otter's probably the hardest out of all of them, just for as grisly and everything as they are. Start in the back. I started on the belly. On the I belly, okay, yeah. This do the same belly. way I do my coons. Just start them on the belly, make one strip down. Start on the leg, go to the side of the tail, go all the way down. You're holding that pretty much straight up and down. Well, you want an angle about like that. Like that, okay. Yeah. So I got two edges on that knife. You know, this is the dull side. You don't ever want to use the sharp side for fox or coyote. Now we're going to stretch this coyote out. This coyote's going to be tanned for the owner. How long is that stretcher you got there normally? Uh, I'm about six foot tall, so probably about five feet. Five feet. So that coyote probably was around 40, 45 pounds, you say? Yeah, I'd say. That stretches down there pretty good. You put them on the stretcher always make sure your hooks are pointing in towards the end. It gives it a little bit of bite. Flip it over. Pick them down on the tail just far enough. So when this is when your sides are rolled down, it, it won't be past your stretcher hook here. But yes, yeah, true. Um, and, and this meat where it stopped here at the back. Just trim that off. Since we're not keeping the paws on this, where are you gonna cut it right there? Yep. I cut them short just for the simple fact that. When you're turning them, that way they don't get all balled up in there. Um, and now since that skin's going to be touching the skin there when you turn it, it can rot in there. So you take some 20 mule team borax and you rub it in there, anywhere that's going to hang over. To have a good fur shed, you need heat and you need air supply and borax. Now you just trim them off right where that knuckle is, or the ankle, whatever you want to call it. Right the knuckle, okay. That's not needed anymore. A little bit of meat here on the bottom. The membrane. And on his ear here, you see that? Yeah, I can see it. So you just skid right around, and there's a little bit of cartilage that usually stays attached. I just cut right under that, and you can cut right around his ear there. And then all you gotta do is. It peels right off, yeah. If you have a sharper knife, it helps too. Then you gotta put borax in the ears here. Um, 
I just trim them up so it's a little bigger here. You can put some borax in it. They don't have to be real small as long as the hair's not poking out the top. Um, and I put borax all around that ear butt because the ears on a red fox and on a coyote are big. And they, uh, they're the last thing to dry. And that uh, it helps speed that up. Because if you don't do that and just say them ears rot and then you go to sell it to a fur buyer and it sm they smell like they're rot and he doesn't know if it's just the ears or if it's the whole batch. So yeah. He's not going to be have to give you more money for it. The bigger the area of the ear hole, the more air gets through. Yeah. Um, like I said, as long as the hair's not poking out, it's the only reason. So you put it on the inside and the out? Yeah, the inside. That, when you flip it, it cures the inside of the ear. I see. And this is going to be in the inside once you turn it. For about a day, that should feel like, if I do it in here, there's plenty of heat and plenty of uh, fan going. Uh, by the next morning, if I do it up at night, by the next morning, it's usually ready. And they should be just dry to the touch, about paper dry. And then after we turn them, put a cardboard tube up there and it helps get that air circulating. So you're pinning them. Yeah, pull them, pull the side down as far as it'll go. And just put a clothes pin. And these stretchers, these are actually some Duke stretchers, but it doesn't matter what stretcher you get, they don't make a good new stretcher anymore. Uh, the hooks slip. I always just pull them down as far as we'll go and put another clothes pin on top of there. That usually holds them down. And uh, when you're stretching anything, the term stretcher is actually not a real good term. Uh, it should be more like a fur form because anything you want to do, you want to keep that, just, you don't actually want to stretch it. You want to pull it down until it's snug and then just keep it there because that pulls your fur apart and it doesn't make it look as dense. I got you. And then anything, uh, anything else I do, I just run a little bit of borax down the tail. Stiffens that up pretty quick too. And you're ready to hang it up, huh? And that's it.